Live and direct. Right, right, right. It's Sway in the morning. Right here on Shade 45. For the most interesting people you're going to have the opportunity to speak with has just joined us in this room with his new book, Mayor for Life, the incredible story of Marion Barry Jr., um, who became, you know, who's already doing a lot of work um, early on in his life, um, working for the people in his uh, career as a, a, a politician, if you will, a servant of the community, uh, but became real famous nationally and maybe even inter- internationally um, because of a scandal um, that took place um, on the day of, was it January 18th? January 18th, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, 19... 90. 1990. Yes. Um, and... Um, it was the mayor himself with the woman by the name of Rashida, who uh, um, he was um, in a sexual relationship with, who was uh, using cocaine, and it's all was on videotape. And then it hit the uh, media circuit, and the rest went from there. But that's not where your story started. Is that why you wrote this book? Well, I wrote the book to be educational, mm-hmm. inspirational, uh to give people a sense of hope that whoever they're into, they can do it. It's also about all the many obstacles that I've overcome. Mm-hmm. That God, I was born black and poor in Mississippi. Yeah. My mother and father were sharecroppers. Went to the third or fourth grade. Went to Memphis when I was eight years old. And while there, uh, I was faced with all the segregation that was in Memphis. And we got involved. And, in college with a, with a white person who was on the board of trustees and going on and on. But more importantly about me, I was the first in my family, immediate family, to go to college. Yeah. The first to get a bachelor's degree, the first to get a master's degree, mm-hmm. the first to spend three hours, three, three years at this basically all-white University of Tennessee and survived all of that, overcame so many things, mm-hmm. overcame medical situations. Mm-hmm. And my, my, not that you suggested that, but my life is not defined uh, by that one night. That one moment. Now, incidentally, factually, what happened, nine jurors, nine jurors, one voted to acquit me of all charges, and three voted to convict me on all charges, mm-hmm. and the government... Uh, during the trial, never produced evidence of what was in that, that pipe. Never did. Uh-huh. So for people to say that I'm a crack dealer, user, all that, et cetera, they don't know the facts about Marion Barry. Okay, well, what are the facts? But f- notwithstanding that, though, yeah. I have apologized yeah. to my family uh-huh. and my son Christopher, who was 34 yesterday, yeah. uh, to the people of Washington, people of the nation, and this country... Is one of second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth chances. Yeah. In fact, Jesus said to one of his disciples, asked him how much people should be forgiven. He said 70 times 70. And the people of Washington, thanks their bright and brilliant people, who have given, forgiven me. Yeah. And so I don't want that one night to be the defining moment of Marion Barry. You know, plus... If people want to know more about that, yeah, buy the book. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, you book. know, I got the book. Honestly, you buy the book. <laughs> Mar- Mar- Marion Barry is here, man. You, you look, I'm gonna tell you this because it, you know I read your history, and you, man, I mean, you worked with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. You worked with John Lewis. You were part of student leadership organization. Uh, you know, like you said, you broke color barriers um, throughout your career. Your uh, your legacy as a mayor. The reason why people keep voting you in is because you care about the people, you care about the community. Uh, and so I think this book is healthy for people to read. Um, I know you also wrote that you one of the reasons why you wrote the book is because you don't want your life and legacy to be all about what happened at the Vista Hotel. So I think for a lot of people who don't really know what happened, if you read the book, like you, you are so explicit. You know, I was reading this passage that said when you were talking about your moments in that room with Rashida, that she went took a one of the times that she took a trip to the bathroom. So you do me a favor. Yes, uh, that happened twenty four years ago. Yeah, I've asked for forgiveness for my constituents. Mm-hmm. They've done that. They know that that one night does not define Marion Barry. And I would encourage folks to get the book. 
You read okay. yeah. I was, so I you, was wait a minute, I was yeah. brutally honest in that book. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to put that in that book. But I was honest. Because my mother taught me a long time ago when I was growing up. I used to get a whippings every day for I lied and I saw him. Man, do you where you been? I don't know, Mama. You don't? Pop, 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 pop. Mm-hmm. We can do this. In fact, when I would go to church with my mother and sit in the back of the the church. And occasionally we take a quarter, three of us, three quarters out of the collection box and go up to the drugstore and get some ice cream. Come back and slide in and hear the sermon, etc. One day my mother met me at the church house door. So where have you been? Mama, I, bam, 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 bam. Yeah. So she taught me the hard way mm-hmm. that you shouldn't lie. Not deliberately, by omission or commission. So I wanted people to believe that I was telling the truth about all of what I said. Because if you disbelieve one part of it, you're going to disbelieve all the other part of it. Hmm. I have led an incredible life. I've overcome, with God's help and some people, so many obstacles. Mm-hmm. Being born poor and black, that's enough to knock people to their knees. Well, that's I was a, not, the, the, the comment I was going to make, you're so brutally honest. You gotta be in this, like you, you, <laughs> you know, when you paint the picture of what happened in that hotel. I won't read it. I'll encourage people to read it themselves. Right, right. You didn't have to be. I know, know I didn't. Yeah. Uh, so I commend you for that. Another thing you talk about is President Bill Clinton. You know, went through um, a whole lot of scandal with Monica Lewinsky. Is it true that he called you for advice? No, he didn't call me. What happened? I've known Bill Clinton mm-hmm. over the years. Because Ron Brown, who was chair of the DNC, Democratic National Committee, mm-hmm. was solely responsible for Bill Clinton's election in 1992. And so I met him. I've been around him. And I was at an affair. or went to visit him, but I came out of that, at one of our hospitals. And Hillary Clinton was getting an award, etc. And so I'm sitting out there in the hallway. And Buell came out. I said, hey, Mr. President, how you doing? He said, let's go back and let's, have, let's talk for a minute. And he said, you've been through so much. How'd you do it? What advice can you give me? So I said to him what I tell everybody. If you find yourself in a hole, stop digging. That's the first thing. And two, when you get out of the hole, don't have self-pity and, and walk around with your head all down mm-hmm. and, and not praying and all this kind of stuff. You got to believe in a strong God, however you, whatever you call his name, and you have to believe in yourself, that you know your own self better than anybody else, and that you don't walk around with your head down. You develop the courage that I have a lot of, mm-hmm. the resilience, the tenacity. And part of the book is to give an example of what one person can do with his or her life, when his life. Mm-hmm. And hopefully it'll be a, a, a transforming moment for others who got the same, a similar problem. That's all. What was and the, young people yeah. are the ones who need to read this book more than the most. Mm-hmm. Because our generation, and yesterday was my son's 34th birthday. Yeah. He keeps me as much up to date as I can. But I love young people, but I find that young people have no sense of history. They don't, they don't link it at all. Even my son. As much as he's been around me, still can't believe some of the things I tell him. You know, like, what, Daddy, why don't you get some guns and shoot these white people? I said, are you crazy? They had the, they had the gun. Uh-huh. They controlled the courts. They controlled the jail. They controlled everything. We'd have been mowed down if you do that kind of stuff, that kind of thing that they knew. But as a personal person, people ought to look to themselves. Uh-huh. I find so much self-doubt. Yeah, among young people in the African American community, mm-hmm. and incidentally, I've done so much for business, um, Hispanics, women, and black. Yeah, uh, in terms of government contracts, three mm-hmm. percent when I went in, forty-seven percent when I came out. Millions of dollars were transferred from over here to qualified African American women. Mm-hmm. And Hispanic. So that's what I want people to see. That it's not where you live, 
what lives inside of you. What was that the biggest like hurdle for you after this that moment took place, considering your history, considering all that you've done as a youth, all the color barriers you broke, that you let your constituency down, you know, people right. who looked up to you, you a person who was a part of the civil rights movement, you who have broken down barriers and gotten to this position, mayor of the capital uh, city of the nation, and to have this happen. Was right. that one, was even, that? Even though the FBI spent millions to do this, I came to reckon with myself. I didn't have to go to that hotel room. I shouldn't have gone to that hotel room. I shouldn't have been nowhere near that hotel room, mm -hmm. nowhere near Rashida, but I hadn't seen her in almost a year mm -hmm. and hadn't even talked to her uh, before the 18th of January after almost a year. But I take full responsibility for my actions, mm -hmm. uh, even though the actions of others got me with her. So I take full responsibility, and as I said earlier, I've apologized to my family, apologized to my son, Christopher, uh, apologized to my uh, friends and constituency. And because this is the nation of second chances and third, fourth, fifth, sixth chances, uh, my constituency has forgiven me. That's why they can see beyond just this one night. They see all the tremendous work I did mm -hmm. in Washington. Look at Washington downtown now. It's a southern, sleepy town. Uh, back in uh, 95, yeah. when I came to D.C. But look at it now. Pennsylvania Avenue wasn't like that. Downtown wasn't like that. But also, yeah. I didn't neglect, neglect the neighborhoods. I put a government building that puts us in you. Mm -hmm. U, U Street was our mecca for a long time. And that created all the development that goes around there now. You, so we, we're going to tear it down. But one thing I did not do enough of is... To, Right in some protection for these African American businesses. Uh -huh. With 31 of them. You know, I got some of your constituency on the line, people from D.C. that want to talk with you. 888 742 3345. We got a Twin on the line from D.C. Is this Twin? Hey, oh, this, this is Damon. Hold on. I'm going to come right back to you. We got a Twin on the line from D.C. Good morning, Twin. How you doing? Hey, good morning. How you doing, Sway? Doing, man? How you doing? Doing all right. All right, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Say, hey, Twin, you are you the one here? that I know? Hey, you met me years ago. You yeah. probably don't Oh, wait, remember oh, wait me, Ben and Terry's? Yeah, yeah. Terry and Thomas. Yeah, it was, it was an awful <laughs> situation. We had two warring groups, the Avenue Group and Semper City Group. Uh -huh. And Bob Woodson, some other of us went over there, it took us two or three days to get everybody to calm down and sit down. And it was about 23 guys. Uh, and 20, 20, 20 of them have done very well with their life. Mm -hmm. Twin, you, you're, the, you're the driver for the director, aren't you? No, 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 oh. not that twin. Not yeah. that twin. Oh, I'm, okay. from, I'm, I'm from Northwest. I'm oh, from Northwest, okay, I got you. Well, twin, twin what remember. would you like to say to the mayor? Man, you know, these people, you know, I, I, I would definitely commend, commend our mayor. If it wasn't for, for this mayor, we would have never had some of you programmed. It's so many things that the man has done leading up to that, that one dra tragic night. And I remember watching it on the news when I was a kid, you know. And people have done so much to try to kick the man down, but he keep getting up. He keep, keep, keep on pushing on, doing good for the city. Yeah. You can ask anybody in the city who was there in the beginning, and they will still tell you they love this man. They love this man. He, no matter if he's not in, in the mayor's office, the man's still the number one mayor in the city, period. All right. Thank you for your call, Twin. We got Damon on the line from D.C. as well. Damon, good morning. How you doing? Morning, Sway. Morning, Heather. Hey, um, good morning. I'm glad we talked about history because the history of D.C. is really interesting because it was a city that became a chocolate city when Martin Luther King spoke, and so many people came to that city, and they stayed afterward after the March on Washington, and that's what made it a black city. What the mayor's actions have done for me it's just been it's been it's been so detrimental to black people in DC because after this Congress took control of DC. I grew up in Washington Heights. I went to University of Maryland. It's not the same city anymore. It is the most gentrified city in in the United States right now. Everyone's moving to Prince George's County. Everyone's moving to Montgomery County. People can't afford to live in DC. It's been an embarrassment for black people, educated black people, 
because black people always have to have a leader in the eyes of whites. So when this happens, this is like, yep, well, this is the reason why you can't have black leaders because of, of things like this. All right, so now, when, when, Damon, when, let's let him respond. Damon, you are so wrong. I appreciate you having that point of view. The great overwhelming majority of people in Washington, D.C. understand what, understood what happened. Look at all my work from the time I've been in 65 to now. Let me talk about gentrification. Gentrification is a problem all over America in urban cities. Marion Barry is not all over the city. I'm not responsible for gentrification because what happened is the conditions are responsible. White people, who mostly 95% of them, come into a neighborhood. If you're a renter, they offer their owner this big number of dollars, and poor people get pushed out. If you're a senior, you bought your home, say, 40 years ago, 35 years ago, say, for Forty thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars. They offer you four, five hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. You're gonna take it because you're gonna be dead at some point soon, and you can't get your sons and daughters to to buy the house. And so that's gentrification can be good, but mostly bad. It displaces black folk, Hispanic people, and women who've been longtime residents. Mm-hmm. It's also bad because it lets the business community off the hook. 82% of the people in Ward 8 are at below the poverty level. The average income is $25,000 in Ward 3, and predominantly white, middle class, upper class. This is in D.C. Yeah, D.C., white people. I praise them for all the hard work they did. But they're making two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Two hundred thousand dollars. Honestly, to the to to, to that, and this twenty five thousand over here, you can't even begin to compete. So we have a serious economic gap all over America, and so I'm not going to spend much time debating with Damon or anybody else yeah. about whether it was embarrassed or not. I've asked for forgiveness. That's behind me yep. twenty four years ago, and that's it. Damon, thanks for your call, man. Uh, look, Marion Barry has to uh, go, but you know, thank you for sharing this time with us. Uh, I really appreciate you coming up here talking about the book. I stay as long as you want me to. I know, but I got to go. <laughs> I mean, I'm flying to oh, Paris tonight, oh, man. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, man. Yeah. I got to go. Oh, you said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah not, not me. I want people to know that I'd, I'd be here all day. You'd be here all day? Yeah, yeah well, Lord, I, I got to go to France. <laughs> oh, uh, let, me, let me congratulate you, too. And I'm going to read your book on the plane, okay? Oh, that'd be great. Okay, Mayor for Life, The Incredible Story of Marion Barry Jr. Make sure you check that out. Check it out. Great to meet you, oh, man. Wherever you buy your books from. Or whether it's Amazon. Amazon.com. Or whether it's uh, at your local bookstore, Barnes and Noble, and some other places. Yep. Okay. Purchase this book. Twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars. There it is. It's worth twenty five million. And then I told John, the information goes. <laughs> I heard that. No, it's a lot of great information in here. It's not just about that moment. Um, and it's about your work and your life legacy. It's about overcoming. And, and about overcoming. It. Absolutely. All right. And I want to thank our other guests. Um, Joel Ortiz from Slaughterhouse for coming by today. Yep. Uh, Torre and Sky Zoo, mm-hmm. the Barrel Brothers. DJ Dirty uh, for coming through as well. Yeah. Of course, Mayor uh, Marion Barry for coming through. Uh, Tracy G, you could be reached where? On Twitter, on Instagram at it's Tracy G, I T S T R A C Y G. Heather B. On Instagram and Twitter, you can hit me up at the Happy Hour W H B. And if you want those drink recipes, make sure you hit me up at the Happy Hour with Heather B.com. And for B is Marion S. Barry Jr. Mm-hmm. on Twitter. Marion S. Barry Jr. on Twitter, and I'm at Real Sway. Just Real Sway if you want to follow okay. me. If you want to follow me. I do. Okay, great. Good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and on Instagram. Because you, you're going somewhere. Thank you. I wouldn't follow you if you were going somewhere. Absolutely. That's what happened to many of our young people now. Yeah. They follow people who ain't going nowhere. Yeah. They mm. follow the drug dealers out here. They have to do this for survival. Mm-hmm. That's not who you follow. Because if you're out selling drugs, one of three things will happen to you eventually. Either you're going to be shot dead, mm-hmm. end up in the hospital or injured, mm-hmm. or end up in jail mm-hmm. for long term. Yeah, that's not where I'm going. And you, I, I know that. That's, yeah. why, that's, that's why I say <laughs> yeah. I follow you. There it is. Mary yeah, Barry I'm, follows I'm, me. All right, that's yeah. what's up, man. I follow you. Okay, and until tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, we have nothing left to say. You're listening to Sway in the morning on Shea 45.